Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to Barad Ministries again. Uh, today we t we having a very sensitive topic. It says don't commit adultery. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Okay. And um, remember, we have all the videos in baradministries.org.uk. Please, if you can, go back on the website. All the videos are there. Okay. And Maurice is going to talk to us about it right now. And Maurice, you have an, a book as well that you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, all the studies are in this book, mm -hmm. Fulfilling the Law. Mm -hmm. it, it, Jesus made a strange say, statement. I've not come to destroy the law, but mm -hmm. to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So we're looking how we fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. Very interesting book. It's the third in the series. Mm -hmm. There's six of them all together. And you can get them from Barrett Ministries mm -hmm. website, www. Uh, ballotministries.org.uk mm -hmm. or from Amazon as a Kindle download. Mm -hmm. So Amen. to the study, uh, it's the second example where Jesus is saying, the law says this, but I say unto you. So this is what Moses said in the law, but fulfilling the law says, love says, because we, we remember love fulfills the law. Mm -hmm. So we should just read it first. It's mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And it's verse 27. I'll read it, the whole uh, uh, paragraph. You have heard it said by them of old time, you shall not commit adultery. So that's the commandment that Joseph yeah. said, not a suggestion, you shall not. <laughs> but I say unto you, so it's like, that's what the law says, but you didn't really understand it. So I say unto you, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. He's not done it physically. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. You, you can't be condemned and stoned to death for committing adultery in your heart, mm -hmm. only when it's manifest. Mm -hmm. But he says it's the roots. And if your right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it's profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if your right hand offend you, cut it off and cast it from you, for it's profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. That's a very strong statement. If you... I offend you, if you hand you offend you, pluck it out, cut it off. So obviously, he doesn't want us to do that. It's just yeah. an illustration, and we'll yeah. look at that later. Before I start, I want to broaden mm -hmm. the, 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 the look at the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. And there's two great themes in the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. We said it when we looked at yes. the, the beginning. Mm -hmm. The first one is hypocrisy. Yes. And then afterwards, mm -hmm. covetousness. Yes. That, so he exposes would, the, the, the yeah. Hypocrisy. So the reason everyone's a hypocrite is because of covetousness. So yes. he exposes the hypocrisy. This is what we're looking at now. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was don't kill, mm -hmm. but last study we saw mm -hmm. if you don't kill, mm -hmm. but you get angry with your brother without a cause, yeah. that's the roots of murder. Mm -hmm. So he's dealing with the roots, uh, and we'll see it's the same with this one. We'll go right back to the roots. So he's exposing the hypocrisy because, you know, I've not killed. Most Christians haven't killed, so they feel righteous. Yeah. But they're not righteous because they get angry without a cause, yes. and they're in danger because anger without a cause is the roots of murder. Yeah. And so we'll see that everyone is exposing our hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go on to why we're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. It's because of covetousness. Mm -hmm. And that... that doesn't seem to add up, but we'll explain it as it goes along. Amen. So I want to just read John 5 before we look at adultery. John 5, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 5. I hope you've got your Bibles if you're watching this broadcast. Mm -hmm. jo Joseph and I have got our Bibles, and you can see mine's well marked. <laughs> uh, mark your Bible. Put little keys on it, draw little keys when there's a key verse in the chapter. Five ways of exploring the Bible. So John 5, mm -hmm. verse 44. 44 yeah. And this is what it said, Jesus talking. How can you believe which receive honour one of another, and not the honour that cometh from God only? Do you think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Mm -hmm. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Mm -hmm. 
Can you see how he's exposing the, yeah. the hypocrites? They said, we believe in Moses. You know, who are you? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, if you believed in, if you really believed in Moses, yeah. you'd believe in me. Mm -hmm. For he wrote of me. Yeah. Moses wrote about me. You only think you believe in Moses. You only think you know the Ten Commandments. You only think you know the law. Mm -hmm. You don't know it. You know the dead letter, yes, and therefore know. you don't understand it, mm -hmm. because Moses wrote about me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? No. So, because they didn't believe Jesus' words, mm -hmm. it proved mm -hmm. they didn't understand Moses' words, because that's what he said. Yeah. If you believe not his writings, yeah. how will you believe mine? It's so very well put. He, he's exposed yes. them. Yeah. He's saying, you don't believe me, therefore... You only think you believe Moses. So that's why he says, in, in, we'll go back to Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 5. That's why Jesus said the same thing each time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to repeat it because repetition yes. is good teaching. Yeah. We need to get it in our hearts. Each time he says, you've heard it said mm -hmm. by them of old time. But he I doesn't said, say yeah. Moses said. Because they don't know what Moses said. They only think they do. Yeah. And he's just exposed them in John. You've heard it said by them of old time. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's just a tradition to you. It's just a dead letter. Mm -hmm. You think you understand it, thou shalt not kill, mm -hmm. but you don't. And it's the same with this one, thou shalt not commit adultery. They didn't understand it at all. Because Jesus said it starts in the heart. In the heart. They thought it started with the act. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look in John, yes. the woman caught in adultery. adultery. So we're going to see how Jesus dealt with it. So... I think the first thing to do, Joseph, is to look at what physical adultery mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It's not mentioned many times in the Bible, as mm -hmm. it happens. I counted 33 times it's mentioned in the Bible. And every one of them, bar a few, are about spiritual adultery. Yes. Very few, I think, because there's only three or four that actually mention physical adultery. All the adultery in the Bible is spiritual. God said to Israel, yes. you've committed whoredom, you've committed adultery yeah. with the Egyptians and the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. So spiritual adultery is very important, but yes. physical adultery, only a few times. And we can look at the scriptures where it mentions it. Mm -hmm. um, Leviticus 20 is the first one. I believe, mm -hmm. maybe not everyone will agree with me, but I believe adultery is a, a man sleeping with a married woman. If a man sleeps who's married mm -hmm. and he sleeps with a single woman, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's fornication, it's lasciviousness, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. but it's not adultery because adultery is stealing a man's property. Yes. Your wife belongs to you, you <coughs> took it to yourself. She mm -hmm. belongs to you, she's yours, mm -hmm. just like we are Christ, we're his property. Yes. We belong to Christ, we're not our own, we're bought yes. with a price. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, you would pay a dowry for your wife. Mm -hmm. And, and you own her, you've yes. paid the price for yes. her. Well, Jesus bought us with his own blood. That was the dowry. Absolutely. Jesus' blood, he bought us. Yeah. We don't belong to ourselves. It's, and so yeah. if I steal your wife, mm -hmm. I'm sinning against you mm -hmm. because Agreed. it's your property. Agreed. So if somebody steals me, they're sinning against Christ mm -hmm. because I belong to him. So yeah. That's can, why he's a false prophet. Yeah, we can parallel it because he's trying to seduce me. Yes. The false prophet is trying to seduce me away from my lover, my husband, yes. Christ. So we, we can't get into that, but it's very yes. profound and very serious. It is, and I, I can I can almost nearly sympathize with the Pharisees because this was deeper than, this was another level for them because yes. it's spirit, you have to have a spiritual understanding of this. But it's, the deception was so much more. There's no way they could understand no. the depth of but this. But the thing. hearts were already so hard Absolutely. that they couldn't. Yeah. They felt they were right. They wouldn't yeah. even think that maybe yeah. they'd got the law wrong. They, mm. It wasn't a possibility to yeah. them. And, and some of the false prophets out in the church today, mm -hmm. they can't believe they could be wrong. Yeah. They're so Very angry if you question them. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're dogmatic and, and there's no compromise. And they won't even think when you're challenged. I've yes. seen some of them challenged on television with reporters mm -hmm. about why have you got six mansions and two mm -hmm. jet planes and that and they're very arrogant they yes. won't say consider it that mm -hmm. when they quote scriptures they're very yeah. arrogant and yeah. almost insult the newspaper are defensive and, defensive yeah. it, it's 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 so sad that the veil has come down yes Hardest, so hardest. let's look at the scriptures, <laughs> and each 20. one of them will mention that it's with another man's wife that's adultery. 
Leviticus 20, and verse 10. These are all the, the laws in Leviticus, mm -hmm. and verse 10. And the man that committeth adultery mm -hmm. with another man's wife. Mm -hmm. So it's letting you know what adultery is. Mm -hmm. It's with another man's wife. Even he that committeth adultery with his neighbour's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. So God sees that as very serious. Yeah. You know, we have our pecking order. Well, murder is, well, that's the ultimate, you know, the death sentence, we'll say. But stealing, it's not so bad on this. Well, Sabbath breaking mm -hmm. was the same punishment as murder, mm -hmm. stoning to death. Mm -hmm. Same as adultery. So adultery is <laughs> equal with murder mm -hmm. in God's eyes. It doesn't matter what we think. We can't make the order of importance. Sabbath breaking, cursing your mother and father was the death sentence. So that's as bad as murder mm -hmm. or adultery. You know, we've got to look at God's standard and we can't make our own up and say, well, you know, the death penalty, that's barbaric. You know, we don't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. We're, looking, we're not looking at society. We're looking at God's standard. Yeah. And uh, I get criticised for it because Christians have, you know, imbibed all the culture that they're in. Mm -hmm. You know, in John Wesley's day, two, 200 years ago, mm -hmm. every Christian believed in capital punishment. Mm -hmm. Every Christian, without exception, they believed in capital punishment. Of course, that's in the Bible. Now, mm -hmm. because cultures change, yes. nearly every Christian doesn't believe in capital punishment. And they believe the Bible is out of date. Yeah, so, so either, yeah, the, they, they wouldn't say so, but that's what yes. they're saying. <laughs> yes. You know, so every culture, the the church just, it's sad. Yes. We don't have to follow society. We've got our standard. And it doesn't alter with any culture yeah. for Africa, Asia, China, India, America. The standard's the same. It's yes. not to do with culture. So there's one Leviticus 20, Deuteronomy 22. These are in the law, of course, yeah. Paul and, and Jesus talk about adultery, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about the law, it's already mentioned these times, and always with a, a married woman, Deuteronomy 22, 22, verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, mm -hmm. because it tells you later, if a man is found, you know, lying with a woman who's not married mm -hmm. then he has to take her to her father and say I've humbled your daughter and he's got to marry her then he can't leave her so there's there's rules for yes. that yeah. but adultery is clearly mm -hmm. uh, a married woman they both of them shall die both the man that lay with the woman and the woman so they'll put away evil from Israel and then Jeremiah 29 and he's criticising Israel. Mm -hmm. I'll just jump in verse 23. Because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbour's wives. So it's mm -hmm. letting you know that adultery is with your neighbour or another mm -hmm. married woman. And I've spoken line words in my name. So it's just one of the sins of yeah. Israel. And then Ezekiel mm -mm -mm -mm. chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Now this it's an interesting chapter because it's talking about Jerusalem. Yeah. As though it's a person, as though Jerusalem is a woman. I remember you, this was an eye-opener for me. Yeah. And, and just I, like a, the, the conception of... Yeah. Uh, this yeah, Saturday, yeah. I'm going to preach on... I'm doing a series, The Parables and Hard Sayings of Jesus. Yeah. And this Saturday, I'm going to film mm -hmm. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, The yes. Hard Sayings of Jesus. And I'm looking at this chapter where you know god personifies yes. a city it was time for love and everything and says you you kill the prophets where, yes. where did how can a city kill a prophet yeah. it's the people yeah. and yet he's accusing jerusalem of killing the prophets and i sent all the prophets to jerusalem but it, which prophet did he send to jerusalem mm -hmm. so it's a very interesting study i hope you you'll mm -hmm. w watch out for it on yeah. youtube jeremiah uh, ezekiel 16 mm -hmm. verse 32 and he's just used it as an illustration. Mm -hmm. He said, you've done this and you've done that. Verse 32. But as a wife that committed adultery, which taketh strangers mm -hmm. instead of a husband. Mm -hmm. So the man is going with a, a married woman, mm -hmm. a wife that committed adultery. So she's a wife, she's married, instead of a husband. So yeah. that, that's adultery. 
So we know what adultery is now. So Jesus says, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's what the law says. Or you think that's what it says. But I say unto you, so fulfilling the law, love says, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her, commits the act in his heart. So I need to say this because, I, you know, I used to do men's seminars. Mm. And so when there's no women about, we could talk about mm. our, our own problems. Well, I have a problem with lust and I have a problem with this. And so it's good when men get together because mm. we can pray for one another, yeah. help one another. And uh, I found that most men have a problem mm -hmm. with temptation. Yes. W well, we're all tempted Every In many single man yeah. but we, it, it shouldn't be a problem mm -hmm. because they thought the temptation was sin. Mm -hmm. So if they look at a woman and they have a thought of adultery or mm -hmm. sleeping with her, mm -hmm. that's not a sin because you have no control over your thoughts that come in. Mm -hmm. You have control over them when they come in. So before the, the thought comes in, how can you control it? No. But you're, you're looking and... you. you it's amazing. You could you, you could be thinking about God. You could have just been praying, speaking in <laughs> tongues, and then you, you open your eyes and you see a woman, and the thought comes in your head. <laughs> that, that you've no control over that. You can't. Yeah. What you can do is bring every thought into captivity, captivity yeah. and say, "I'm not having that. I'm not yeah. going there. Yeah. That's not sin. The temptation is not sin. Otherwise, mm -hmm. Jesus sinned." Yeah. Because he was tempted yes. in every point like us. Yeah, so yeah. he must have been tempted with lust, yeah. with stealing, with murder. Mm -hmm. If he's tempted in every point as us, every thought must have gone into Jesus. Head, but he brought every thought into captivity Absolutely. to the obedience of Christ. So it wasn't sin. Mm -hmm. It's when it goes from the head to the heart. Mm -hmm. It says you've committed it in your heart, not in your head. Mm -hmm. So when I get the thought, adultery mm -hmm. and I think no I'm not having that I've got a wife I love her I don't want to do that mm -hmm. that's not a sin mm -hmm. the sin is when it goes in my heart I'm thinking yeah how can I get her on her own mm -hmm. how can I and I'm now looking through her clothes and imagining the act mm -hmm. now it's, it's, sin. it's, Life it's, it's conceiving in my heart yeah. mm -hmm. and that's dangerous yeah. I've not committed adultery even still yes. but it's like Jesus said you're in danger of the judgment you, you started the process yes. mm -hmm. the process starts with the thought in your head yeah. And if you deal with it there, it's not a sin. Yes. But if it drops to the heart and now you're dwelling on it mm -hmm. and imagining And you're planning that, it. And, and you're yeah. planning it. It's, it's, it's sin mm -hmm. in the heart. That's, that's the root of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, It's very good to explain it because it's when you fall into the temptation that it becomes sin. Not the temptation. Not that's the temptation. Good, I like it, that, yeah. When you fall into it, now you begin to act upon it. Yeah. Then you dwell on it enough to, to actually act. Yes, absolutely. Then James, oh. I like James to really explain it. <laughs> you know the process of it. Yeah, yeah. Anyone, everyone is drawn away by their own lust, yeah. and then it becomes it becomes it's, sin. it's yeah. conceived. It's con yeah. You're working it out. Yeah. It's conceived. There's a conception. Then there's birth. So the church, uh, well, religion, I'm, I'm saying the church, but all religions, they cannot deal with the heart, they deal with the outward. The outward. When you commit adultery, you'll have to leave the church. You're banned from taking communion. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, mm -hmm. but it's a bit late. Mm -hmm. We should teach people before. Mm -hmm. It's too late when it gets to that. I mean, does a pastor go into the ministry so he can sleep with one of the women in the church? No. He goes to Bible college because he loves God. He wants to serve God. He never intended to commit adultery. So how did it happen? It, it, it must have happened slowly. He slowly. must have looked step at a woman step. in the church or she was making eyes at him. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But instead of cutting it dead with mm -hmm. the thought, mm -hmm. he let it get in his heart. Mm -hmm. And now it moves further. And, and God's really good because it, it goes through the process. Mm -hmm. um, so the church deal with the morals, the outward action, but God is dealing with the, the heart. heart, he's exposing us Always. and dealing with the heart. Because all sin starts with the thought, yes. not the action. So let's look at the very first sin in Genesis, yeah. because that sets a precedent. Mm -hmm. And all sin starts the same way with the temptation. Yes. The devil didn't make Eve sin. You can't. You can never blame the devil. Well, the devil put the thought in my heart, the devil in my head, the devil tempted me 
That's his job. That's what God made him for, mm. to tempt us as an adversary. Mm. It's our fault if we let it get in our heart. Yeah. So we can't blame the devil for the bad thoughts. Mm. We've got to blame ourselves because we let the bad thoughts become a reality of our heart. It's ignorance in the in the teachings, basically. That's why Jesus said, "Go preach and teach." Yeah, you see, and because many in the bodies are not trained uh, to discover these kind of things, we read those. You shall not. You shall not. We just read them as a to memorize them, yeah. but we never really had to make mince meat out of it. What is exactly what is he talking about? Nobody really goes in depth, yeah. so they, because we don't take it to heart, we fall all the time. Yeah. Until we really examine the scripture, that's why we have to examine the scripture. Yeah. We have God to wants us it. to know. Yeah. God don't want to hide knowledge from us. He wants us to know. Yeah. And He wants to free us because I was yeah. condemned for years because I was tempted and I had thoughts that that weren't right. Yes. And now I realise the temptation's not a sin. It's only a sin when I allow it in my heart. I've got to get rid of it at root. Yeah. And, and that, that frees a lot of men when we talk about yes, it. Because okay. they all have the same problem. They all have, I've never met a man who hasn't had a lustful yeah. thought. And that's all right. It's mm -hmm. what you do with it. So Eve, mm -hmm. right at the Genesis beginning, three. Genesis 3. Mm -hmm. The devil, we know he, he, he said what he said to Eve. We mustn't go into that for, for the sake of time. But verse 6. Mm -hmm. So he's put the thought in her mind, mm -hmm. and here's how it was conceived. He says, you won't die, so he's put the thought. When the woman saw mm -hmm. that the tree was good for food mm -hmm. and pleasant to the eyes mm -hmm. and a tree to be desired to make her wise, mm -hmm. so she saw it, she coveted it, yep. she wanted it, she let it get in her heart, mm -hmm. And she took, she took of the fruit and did eat. Mm -hmm. But it starts with the thought, the devil put the thought, why don't you take the fruit? It'll make you more like God. Mm -hmm. And it would do. It was a good thought. Mm -hmm. Because the, the next chapter, and the Lord God said, behold, man's become one of right. us yeah. to know good and evil. Yeah. So it did make her more like God. But it was disobedience. It wasn't that it wouldn't make her more like God. She God disobeyed said, don't God. Eat of it. Don't, that was the test. Yeah. It'll make you more like God. That's the only thing I've not told you about. You, you like me. I've made in my image, except mm -hmm. you don't know good and evil. And I don't want yeah. you to. You Trust me. It. So Adam's choice was obedience and disobedience. Mm -hmm. He didn't know good or bad yeah. till he ate it. That's the tree of conscience. So yeah. he didn't have a conscience. I like when you say, God. all God was trying to say, trust me. I know what's good and what's bad. Just trust me. I'll trust tell you me. what's good and bad. Don't yeah. dis But now we decide what's good. Yes. 200 years ago, abortion was bad. Now it's good. Mm -hmm. 200 years ago, witchcraft was bad. Now it's good. Yeah. It's, we decide. It's passing and, to a law now. And culture can change it from generation to generation mm -hmm. with no stability, with no yardstick, with, with no <laughs> moral code now. Mm -hmm. Every man does what's right in his own eyes. Yeah. Well, it's my truth and it seems right to me and I don't hurt anyone, so why can't I do it? Mm -hmm. We can't trust God. God knows what's best for us. And this is the best way to live. Yeah. The Ten Commandments are wonderful. Wouldn't we have a happy life if nobody killed? Yes. If nobody committed a drug and stole your wife? Leave your doors open. If nobody cursed the mother and the father, if we obeyed God's laws, it would be wonderful. But we know better than God. So God says, well, that's your choice. I've made you, I've made you a God. You can be a God if you want. Make your own morality. It's almost like all, most of the sins are locked into lack of trust. We don't trust God enough to entrust him with everything. Yeah. So because we feel... We, we have ownership a little bit. We want to take ownership a little bit and we want to, uh, uh, you know, he gave us a brain, you know. So that, it's like sin is locked in that. Either you yeah. trust him 100% or you don't. So you make your own decision. You trust yourself. Yeah. Eve bought her independence. Yes. Rebellion buys your independence. Yes. So she rebelled against God. Now she's independent. She could do what she wants. Yes. And that's all, all sin yes. is independence. Yeah. I know God says it, but I want to do it, so yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. And it's rebellion. Yeah. You have to rebel to be independent. Wow. So all sin starts with the thoughts, and we've mm -hmm. proved it with Eve. But let's go back to Matthew, because he tells us the progression. It's very, very good. Matthew chapter 5. 
So if you look at a woman, mm -hmm. that's a temptation. You get the thought. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you let it get in your heart, then you want to get close to the person. You see a woman across the room mm -hmm. and you have the thought mm -hmm. and you think, no, no, I'm, I'm going to the toilet. I'm not even going to look at that woman yeah. because I've had a wrong thought. You've dealt with it. Yeah. But if you don't and you deal with it, then I'll go and introduce myself. Oh, hello, dear. You know, what's your yeah. name? And, and and then, so it's taught. And the first thing you do is touch. Mm -hmm. Are you all right, love? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you, you, you want to... So that Jesus said, if your right hand offend you. Yeah. Good because shot. that's how it starts. You can't commit adultery without touch. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You can't commit adultery for, if you're social distancing. <laughs> nobody can commit adultery. It's safe, isn't it? Yeah, if yeah. we social distance, nobody can commit adultery. But to commit adultery, you've got to get intimate, get yeah. close. So it starts with the touch. So yeah. Jesus says, if your right hand offend yes, you, yeah. if you're going to touch the woman, yeah. even just a gentle pat, not... not yeah. Touch it, you know, sensitive yeah. parts of the body. Just touch, hey, all right, love. Cut it off. Mm -hmm. That's how ruthless God says. Cut it off mm -hmm. and cast it from you. Pick it up and throw it away. That's how desperate he is. Mm -hmm. The problem it's is, radical. when I cut that hand off, I've got another hand, I've got my left hand. Yeah, yeah, to touch. <laughs> so, so we've got a problem here. We'll look at this in a minute. Yeah, so deal with the heart. Sorry, I, I, I've jumped one. Mm -hmm. It's the first one, mm -hmm. so keep that in mind. The first one mm -hmm. is if your right eye offend you. So <laughs> yeah. before you touch, yeah. you look. Eyes. Yeah. So you look, and, and you, instead of turning away, you keep looking. Yeah. So he said, if your right eye offend you, pluck it out. Get a hold of your, your eye. You can pluck your own eye out if you've got enough courage. Yeah. You can get it and pluck it out and cast it from you. Mm -hmm. That's how ruthless God's saying, rather than commit adultery. Mm -hmm. It's better to go Enter to life. heaven with one eye yeah. than to go to the lake of fire yeah. with two eyes. And what happens if you don't deal with the look? Then you move closer and touch and we've dealt with that. And, and of course, after the touch, then you, you commit yeah. the act. So, so look, look away, or look, then linger. When you linger, mm, you plan, then you're lost. Yeah, then and, you're, and then you want to touch. Yes. So if you deal with the eye and walk away, <laughs> you'll never have to bother with the hand, will you? Yeah. yeah. And Go if you deal. don't deal with the hand, once you touch, it, it sets on fire something, doesn't yeah. it? Amen. So how many people have, have fallen for that, not dealing with the, the thought yeah. or the eye and the look? Well, let's switch off a minute and look at an example because Jesus yeah. actually deals with somebody who's committed adultery. Yeah. And I think that all the preaching I've heard on it, I think they get it wrong mm -hmm. because they say God forgave her. She committed adultery mm -hmm. and, God for, and God forgave her. Yeah. It never says we'll God say, forgave we'll say no her. More. Let, let's, um, John? John. Mm -hmm. Uh, John chapter 8. I don't think anyone could disagree with me when they explain it. They've just not looked at it deep enough. But Joseph said, you can't just read it and make your own conclusion and say, ah, you know, God forgave her because he, he nobbled the, the witnesses up. So let's, let's look at it. John 8, mm -hmm. verse 3. And the scribes and the Pharisees mm -hmm. brought unto him, this was in the temple, so mm -hmm. let me read from verse 1. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning they came again unto the temple. Mm -hmm. So he's actually in God's house in the temple. Mm -hmm. So that's like the church, isn't mm -hmm. it? And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. So they'd caught her in mm -hmm. adultery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to accept that she committed adultery. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say they were lying. So let, let's believe that. And set her in the midst. And they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Right. So it wasn't hearsay. Yeah. We saw her go into the house. Yeah. Somebody has actually caught them in bed. We've caught them in the very act. Mm -hmm. So it's not hearsay. So let's accept that's true. 
And now they're trying to catch him with the law. So this is really good. Because Moses said, now Moses in the law commanded us, not suggested, commanded us, that such shall be stoned. What do you say? They wanted to see if he would break Moses' law. Would Jesus break Moses' law? Never. Why would he break his father's law? It was God's law. It was not Moses' law. It was God's law. Why would he break his father's law? How could he forgive her? And not stone her. The Moses law said she should be stoned. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus wouldn't go against that. This is said tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Mm -hmm. We'd say he's playing a deaf yes, one. Yeah. You know, he's, he's pretending he hasn't heard them. Now, I've heard preachers say when he was writing on the ground, he was yeah. writing all their sins. Yeah. Well, it could have been. We don't know. I prefer to think he was doodling, because that's what I do. You know, when somebody's on the phone, and, oh, Brother Barrett, uh, I've got this problem, and, and I've heard it a thousand times before, and it's going on for half an hour, so, and I'm, I'm drawing little matchstick men on my thing, and I'm, I'm writing my signature, <laughs> practising it, and I'm doodling. In other words, I'm not interested. You don't, and I, every now and again I say, mm, yeah, and I grunt and say, amen, sister. <laughs> and, and, but really, it's, it's wearing me out. And I'm doodling. And I think Jesus was saying, look, I'm not interested. I, I'm, you know, leave me alone. I, I'm not interested. Why wasn't he interested? They're quoting Moses' law. So they know the law. Why are they asking Jesus? Mm -hmm. Moses said, do this. Do they expect Jesus to say Moses was wrong? Yeah. Oh, well, Moses was wrong. And now I've come. It's different. No, of course Jesus will uphold Moses' law. So he's saying, get get on with it, it's yeah. all right. And the proof of it is to me, is when they kept asking him. So when they continued asking him, they wouldn't <laughs> yes, have to, come on, Jesus, stop. tell us, what do you think? <laughs> You've not told us yet, what do you think? Moses said this, come on, Jesus, give us your opinion. Yeah, i never seen that, that they continued asking. He didn't want to answer. Yeah. In other words, you know Moses' law. Why yeah, don't you yeah. stone her? Why are you bringing her to me? See, that's it. They why continue, have you, why they haven't were, you stoned her? Why, why are you bringing her to me? I'm not the high priest. Yeah. Obviously, they tried to trap him, basically. They, they tried to trap him, you yeah. see. So they kept asking. So when they continued asking him, he lifted mm -hmm. up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. He didn't say... Don't stone her. Mm -hmm. He says, get on go, with it. Yeah, go ahead. So that little red letter in my Bible, he that is among you, let him cast the first stone. We need to know Moses' law. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know Moses' law, I'll tell you. Yeah. It says when somebody mm -hmm. has committed an act worthy of death, adultery, murder, mm -hmm. then they have to be stoned. Mm -hmm. But nobody can stone them until the witnesses pick up the first stone. Mm -hmm. So if I've seen, caught you in the very act of adultery, I take you before the priest mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and it's got to be two witnesses. One witness can't condemn anyone to death. It's got to be in the mouth of two or so three, three witnesses. Witness, yeah. So two is the minimum number mm -hmm. who's actually witnessed it. Mm -hmm. I saw him kill the woman. We were both there. We saw them commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Then... The judge says, the witness, witness, they both agree. Okay, she's got to be stoned. Mm -hmm. They have to pick up the first stone. Mm -hmm. They have to throw the stone because it's on their word. They say, we mm -hmm. saw her. Yeah. Now, everyone else can, can stone them mm -hmm. because they picked up the first stone. They're saying they saw her, mm -hmm. so it's on their hearsay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what a judge will do. He'll command a man to death, mm -hmm. even though the judge wasn't mm -hmm. there, because the witnesses say it happened. Mm -hmm. So if the witnesses mm -hmm. collaborate and they agree, the judge, who doesn't even know, mm -hmm. will pass the sentence. So because God is fair, mm -hmm. he says, you know, you cast the first stone if you saw it. This is so good, Maurice. I just want to let people know that whenever they see Jesus saying something like that, go back in the Old Testament, yeah. you will find Deuteronomy 17.7 7 will explain it. Remember, this is the word of God, and Jesus came to fulfill the scriptures. So we will always go back in the Old Testament. And this is just a good thing because instead of reading it passively, yeah. go back and just study a little bit. Then you will notice that Jesus is not just making something up. No. And because, obviously... Christians just think that, oh, well, you if 
cast yeah. the first stone, yeah. but it's actually quoting the law of Moses yes. to them. Absolutely. And they know the law. So why couldn't they pick up the first stone? Because the Pharisees hadn't caught her in the act. Do you yeah. think a Pharisee would go and, and, <laughs> and hide behind a curtain to watch two people making love yeah. and then jump out they and say, They normally wouldn't do you? that. No, they'd send the servants. <laughs> They wouldn't do that. They're above that. I wouldn't watch a sex act. No, that's pornography. Too holy, yeah. Too hot. They're too holy. So they say to the servants, look, we know that woman commits adultery. Yeah. Go and catch her in the act. And then they drag her, the woman, and say to Jesus, yeah. when Jesus quoted the law, mm -hmm. you will, without sin, cast yeah. the first. In other words, if your conscience is free, if you saw her, yes, you yeah. stone her. So mm -hmm. actually Jesus said, Go ahead. Moses' go ahead. law, go ahead, stone her. If, you're, if your conscience is free, if you're he, the ones that are witnesses, yeah. stone her. Yeah. And he said, and yeah. he again wrote on the ground and said, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> Nothing to do with me, I'm doodling. Yeah. Get on with it. So he didn't say, don't stone her. No. And again, he stooped on the ground. And when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, they knew the law. Yes, yes. They went out but one by one, beginning at the eldest, even to the list. Last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. Mm -hmm. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, this is very important, mm -hmm. where are now thine God accusers? Jesus. Has no man condemn you? Mm -hmm. If there's no witnesses, you can't be condemned. Mm -hmm. The witnesses have gone out. He said, where's the accuser? Has no one condemned you? In other words, he wasn't condoning her mm -hmm. and he wasn't saying, you know, he said, stone her, mm -hmm. that's the law, get on with it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't because they, they, they were only saying it to tempt him, they hadn't seen it. So he said, has nobody condemned you? Mm -hmm. No, Lord. He says, neither do I. Mm -hmm. He had no choice. How could Jesus condemn her without witnesses? Yeah. You see, he was executing the exact law the exact of Moses, law. the mouth of two or three witnesses. The wit there was no witnesses. Where's, where's the accusers? Mm -hmm. Well, if there's no... You know, if, if I go to court accused of murder mm -hmm. and somebody nobbles the witnesses mm -hmm. and say, if you, you go witness against it, you saw the murder, will kill your children or something terrible, and they don't turn up at court... Mm -hmm. The man goes free. There's yeah. no witnesses. Mm -hmm. It's 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 amazing, isn't it? They, how can you condemn a man without witnesses? So Jesus, he wasn't letting her off. He had no choice. He couldn't condemn her because there was no witnesses. And what he said, neither do I condemn her. Go and sin no more. He accepted she committed adultery. Mm -hmm. he, and what he was saying is, you've been let off. Mm -hmm. There's no witnesses. I know you've done it. Mm -hmm. You've got a chance now. Go and sin no more. Live a clean life now. Mm -hmm. So we need to mention here, Joseph, that yeah. even if Joseph, Jesus had forgiven her, yeah. the punishment still stands. stands. If I'm a Christian, this I'm challenging you now, mm -hmm. in case you think Jesus forgave her. He may have done. Mm -hmm. He didn't in this instance. But if he had forgiven her, mm -hmm. the, the death sentence would still stand. If I committed murder as a Christian... Mm -hmm. And I said, what have I done? Oh, and I asked the family, will you forgive me? I say to God, will you forgive me? And God forgives me. God will always forgive me, whatever I do. Mm -hmm. Would people say, oh, well, he doesn't have to go to prison, then God's forgiven him. No, you still, you still serve the sentence. I've got to serve the sentence. Mm -hmm. You see, so there's consequences of the sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is different. Mercy, we've looked at it. Mercy is saying you don't have to have the sentence. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God could do that. Mm -hmm. But normally, mm -hmm. you would, you know, you'd be forgiven, but still suffer the consequences. Yeah. So maybe that's interesting. Maybe you've seen it in a different light. Maybe you agree or disagree. Yeah. But I, I think that's quite powerful that Jesus didn't go against Moses' law. He actually quoted it to them and <coughs> convicted them. He reinforces them, and then he goes to the root of them. What they really, what yeah, he really meant. Yeah. In this case, you know how they, uh, I always met people saying, some sort of woman trying to defend, saying, what, what was the man who committed, who was in the very act with her? Yeah. What, what about that man? That's, that's a good point. <laughs> it said that both of them must be stoned to death. Yes. But we can forget that. <laughs> because if Joseph and I yeah. 
conspire to murder somebody mm -hmm. and between us we murder them mm -hmm. and they catch me mm -hmm. and you, you go back to Africa and they can't mm -hmm. find you. Mm -hmm. They don't let me off mm -hmm. because they can't find you. Yes. Mm -hmm. They say, well, we've got you and mm -hmm. you committed murder yeah. and I'll go to prison. Yeah. So you should have been there. Mm -hmm. But because you wasn't, you don't let them. So you don't let the woman off yes, because yeah. the man's not and there. And she didn't deny it either. She didn't deny it. No. Yeah. And Jesus said, sin no more. So <laughs> everyone knew she, she, it must have been a common thing. She must have known she was a loose woman. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's not like now in Manchester where there's two and a half million people. Yeah. There were little villages and, and, you know, people knew everyone's business. Yes, yes. Amen. You know, it, it, that's so. All right, well, let's go back to Matthew. And I want to look at that illustration that Jesus gave. Because I said, well, obviously, Jesus doesn't want you to pull your eye out or cut your hand off. But I'm going to shock you and say he does. Let, let's read it, mm -hmm. and I'll challenge you. Matthew 5. But hear me out. Don't switch off because I've said that. Hear me out. You'll have to agree with me. Jesus says this. If your right eye offend you, mm -hmm. so you can't stop lusting. Mm -hmm. You're Fashion, watching, yeah. you're watching pornography 29. and committing yeah. adultery in your heart. Yeah. If you if you watch pornography, you're committing sexual acts in your heart, yes. aren't you? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, when, when something flashes on your screen on the computer and you haven't put it there and it's some sex act, you say, oh, turn that off quick. Mm -hmm. But if you're watching it, you, you're committing those acts in your heart. Fornication in your heart, yeah. Yeah, whatever act it is, bestiality, mm -hmm. anything, you're doing it in your heart. If you watch it, mm -hmm. if you turn it off, that's great. Mm -hmm. That You were just tempted. Mm -hmm. So if you're right, I offend thee, pluck mm -hmm. it out, cast it from thee. Mm -hmm. This is the challenge. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it's profitable. Mm -hmm. It's a good deal. Mm -hmm. It's profitable that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. So... Is it an illustration or is it true? Well, I I'll ask you, would you rather go to heaven with one eye and one ear mm -hmm. and one leg or go to the lake of fire for eternity with the whole Off your body? Eyes. <laughs> I'd say no. I, whatever price I pay, I'd, I couldn't bear to be in the lake of fire. For I'd rather go to you know the lake of fire with one eye, uh, heaven with one eye than go to the... So it is profitable. Mm -hmm. And, and yes, hand. Would you rather go to heaven with one hand or go to the lake of fire with two? It's a non-starter. We, we no Christian can argue against that. It would be profitable. Mm -hmm. Does he want me to do it? No. no. That's the ultimate. No. But if I did it mm -hmm. and saved my soul, it would be a good deal. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is you don't have to wait Till yeah. you get to that. Don't don't, that don't wait till you get to that yeah. stage where you've got to pluck your eye out. Deal with it. Deal with it. So I say, you know, because when I pluck my eye out mm -hmm. and I think, I've dealt with that, I've, I can lust with the other eye. Mm -hmm. When I cut my hand off, I've got another <laughs> hand. So, you know, it's true. Yeah. You'd have to cut two hands off. You'd have yes. to blind yourself and cut your hands off. Yes. Um, and then you could still imagine what you'd seen in your heart. Yeah. So he's saying, don't let it get to that. Yeah. Deal with the roots. It's always about the roots, yeah. like with murder. Don't wait till you've got a knife in your hand waiting yes. outside the man's house till he comes out to kill mm -hmm. him. Deal with the anger. I remember you saying a while back that, you know, you can heal somebody who's been on a wheelchair and then now uh, he can walk to go see <laughs> Before he used to just think about it, but he couldn't go there. Yeah. But now you heal him. You could. He, yeah. he runs now to go see him, basically. Yeah. Because so sometimes being in a wheelchair yeah. helps you because you can't do it. You know, it, it, it's a funny thing. We have to deal with the heart, absolutely. Yeah, so it's a deal with the yeah. heart. So what I say, huh? you know, dealing because it starts with the thought, then the eyes. Yeah. So if the TV offends you, uh -huh. And you can't stop watching pornography when your wife's gone to bed and you, you stay up watching the, the sex channels. Mm -hmm. Don't rip your eye out. Kick the Get television out. Mm -hmm. So deal with it. You mm -hmm. don't keep your eyes and kick the television out. If the newspaper offends you, mm -hmm. you know, I cancel the newspaper because, you know, 40 years ago, you know, 
I wouldn't turn to page three immediately, mm -hmm. but I know when I, I looked at it, there was a topless woman. I would dwell there for a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and men say, "Oh, I only get the news. I only get that newspaper for the crossword." <laughs> And I think, oh, deceived. Get a yeah. crossword book with a hundred crosswords in them. Yeah. You know, I only get the newspaper for the sport. I always go to the back, back of the paper. Page, yeah. yeah, but it works its way forward to page three. <laughs> so, you know, I understand that I'm a man, so I know how men think. Oh, because yeah. I, I think the same. I've had to change, but, I, you know, every man thinks the same. And yeah. I, I'm sure women have their own problems. I, I know how men think because I'm a man yeah. and I know how to deal with it. So I cancelled the newspaper just because <laughs> I was watching stuff that wasn't profitable. I mean, how gradually, many, they, yeah, you can do it gradually, basically. It's how many it's murders possible. do you need to read about? Because yeah. you're always grabbing, you, the newspapers yeah. are not how this good and that good, it's what MPs run away with his secretary, <laughs> which man has, which pop star has done yeah. this, and which, it's all Rossi. debauchery, and, and we, all, we like to read it. Who's been raped? I used to read about the rape and hope that they'd put the details in, because it, it feeds something in yeah. you. Role playing. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, we're drawn towards us it's because we've got Adam in us. So, you know, so if Gosh. it offends you, yeah. kick it out. Yeah. If your job offends you, leave yes. it. Yes. So if I'm a secretary, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I go into work and I find out the boss only, you know, hired me because mm -hmm. he wants to sleep with me, mm -hmm. then I've got to leave the job. Yeah. I, why tempt myself? And if I'm a boss... And I employ this woman and she comes in a nice long skirt and mm -hmm. modest and I think, oh, she'll do the job. And then she starts coming to work in low cut dresses and she's got a short skirt and, and I, she's showing everything. I've got to have a word with her and say, look, you know, I didn't employ you for that. It's giving me problems. Mm -hmm. A boss has to be honest. You're giving me problems. I've got a wife at home, yeah. you know, and you're here. I, I'm seeing parts of your body that's uh, like sight, mate. I don't want to. Either you'll have to dress more modestly yeah. or I'll have to Come find up. another secretary. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. what you do in your own time, it's, yeah. it's your business. But I, I don't want you to provoke me because I'm committing adultery in my heart. You don't have to say that, but a boss can have a way of saying it nicely. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you're very attractive and I don't want to have these thoughts about mm -hmm. you. So, so we could do, deal with the roots yeah. because if you don't, you keep looking at the secretary in the end, can I give you a lift home, love? And then can I come in for a coffee? And then... I think that's really important, coming back to the issue of trusting God. Because... In some instances, you're thinking, being the environment that causes you to sin. Yeah. You need to either change vis-a-vis -vis the environment or leave the environment. But how, how long can you resist being the same place, being only, tempted by the same thing? Only so long. Only so long. It, 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 so, it, little by little, it gets yeah. to you. Yeah. Because it's like you don't want to be presumptuous that, oh, or I dealt with it, and I can stay, I dealt with it. But you resist, 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 so it's either you leave the environment or you change towards, but generally it's better to get rid of the TV, get rid of the whatever offends yeah. you. But what yeah. people do is, oh, it doesn't affect me. Ah. You know, I, I watch a bit of pornography and I do this and I do that, but it doesn't affect me, I can handle it. It doesn't, it doesn't stop my relationship with God, mm. and they, they defend it. Yeah. You're best to be guilty and say, yes, I've got a problem. Yeah. Because God can deal with problems. He can't deal with lies. Yes. So I think we're finished, but it'd be good to look at spiritual adultery because if, if physical adultery is bad mm -hmm. and it starts with the little roots, mm -hmm. what about spiritual adultery? It mm -hmm. must start with the roots again. Yeah. Uh, James 4, mm -hmm. verse 4. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says, verse 4. Mm -hmm. You adulterers and adulteresses, but it's not talking about physical adultery. Yes. Don't you know the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of, of God. God. So he calls love of the world mm -hmm. spiritual adultery. Mm -hmm. So how many Christians love the world? They love the politics. They love the fashion. They love the culture. They, they love the entertainment. That's the world. And they argue about politics a lot these yeah. days. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the, the lust, lust of, of the, the eyes, eyes, the pride, the pride of life. Of life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not of the Father. Mm -hmm. So what's adultery? When I have a wife and I say I love her, mm -hmm. but Friday night 
I have another woman mm-hmm. and I go and sleep with her and tell her I love her. That's mm-hmm. adultery. Mm-hmm. So spiritual adultery is when I say I'm married to Christ. Mm-hmm. I'm the family of God. Mm-hmm. You know, and we go to church, oh God, I love you. Mm-hmm. Bow our hands before, my heads before you. Mm-hmm. We worship God. Then we leave the church and we have our other love and we love yeah. the world. We go home and watch a film yeah. that's dubious. We go home and and prove that we love the world. You know, we can't wait for the meeting to finish because the football's on. It's on at 10 o'clock. I hope the pastor doesn't take too long with the prayer meeting because <laughs> United are playing at 9.30. And so, you know, I've been in America where the pastors have finished the meeting early, deliberately, and told me, we're well. finishing at 8.30 because of the baseball. Mm-hmm. They love the world. It's spiritual adultery. Mm-hmm. How can I say I love my wife and, I, and I, I've got another woman? And I'm buying her presents and stroking her hair. And how can I say I love my wife? It's mm-hmm. it's adultery. So spiritual adultery is ten times worse, mm-hmm. I believe. So let, let's conclude. Mm-hmm. So even with a disciplined mm-hmm. life outwardly, mm-hmm. I don't steal, I don't murder, I don't commit adultery, mm-hmm. we can be committing spiritually adultery in our heart. So with each one... Mm-hmm. Don't wait for the act, deal yes. with the roots. The roots of murder is anger in the yeah. heart, deal with it. When you get the thought, I could kill him, get rid of it, bring it into captivity. Mm-hmm. Adultery, when I look at a woman and, and I get those thoughts, that's mm-hmm. temptation, that's not sin. Deal with it, bring mm-hmm. it into captivity. You'll never have to pluck your eye out, you'll never have to do anything. Yeah. You're safe, deal with the roots, mm-hmm. don't wait for the process. Don't let the process of adultery start. Don't let the process of murder start. It's good because you said at the beginning, as we close, you said at the beginning that we are, Jesus bought it as a price. We are, you were saying, you were saying about a dowry, like, because if we cannot realize that we are the temple. Yeah. That God lives in us. Yeah. That should create the fear of God in us that we don't want to do that. We don't want to offend our husband. Jesus Christ. So it's, it's good for people to understand on a spiritual side. That that's how important yeah. it is. I, I think the church has failed mm-hmm. the believers mm-hmm. because they've not taught them about fear. Yes. And, and uh, fear is a wonderful thing. Fear stops me walking over the cliff mm-hmm. when I get to the edge. There's healthy fear. It's a healthy fear. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I should fear hurting my wife. Mm-hmm. God forbid I should sleep with another woman. I don't want to. Yeah. I, I'm frightened to hurt. I love her too much. Yeah. Love brings fear. Yes. If you love them, you're frightened to hurt them. Children, I better not do that. My dad wouldn't like it. Yeah. That's a good fear. I fear to hurt my dad. Yeah. So the fear of the Lord's the beginning of wisdom. Amen. It's, uh, Amen. it's so necessary. So, guys, thank you. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you bear with us basically we know it's a little bit too long but i think this in these difficult and challenging times we need to get real we need to make means meet out of the word uh and this about ministry we really give you the opportunity to do that so please go through the scriptures check the scriptures with us don't believe like maurice would say don't believe what we say test it with the scriptures amen yeah maurice you know? yeah father we've got through another study and I'm so grateful that we can talk about these things practically. Father, you, you, you put in your word many things. You talk about adultery. You talk about bestiality. You talk about homosexuality. Lord, you don't hide sins from us. You even expose David who committed adultery and murder. Mm. Lord, it's all there for us if we're honest and we'll look at it. We don't have to hide behind uh, so-called morality and righteousness, Lord. You're dealing with the nitty-gritty. You were on this earth, Father, and you were tempted in all points like as we. Mm. You know what it's like to be tempted with all these things, with anger, with lust, with pride, with selfishness. And so you're a good high priest. Mm. Because you know about our infirmities. Mm. And and you're there to plead with us to the Father and say, Father, I've been on that earth. I know what it's like for Morris. I know what it's like for Joseph. I've been there. I've been a man Hmm. in flesh and blood. And I thank you, Lord, that you walked this earth in flesh and blood and spoke to adulterers and fornicators and wicked people and hypocrites. You've been there, Father, so you can understand our trials. I just pray you'll... 
Enlighten us, Lord, and help us to see truth so that we can be free from all these taboos and mm. these false morality that the church seemed to have. Help us, Father. Amen. Amen. So, guys, we see you again next week. Don't forget. God bless. Thursday. Very interesting subject yeah. next mm -hmm. week and a delicate one, divorce. Mm -hmm. So I hope you look forward to it. Okay. Thank you.